All right. Well, I think I'll go ahead and get started. Um, so if you're tuning in, welcome, welcome. Um, it's a stormy, uh, rainy afternoon here in Virginia as her, as the remnants of Hurricane Ida kind of pass us by, kind of dropping a lot of rain on us. So um, hopefully the electricity, the power will stay on throughout this. So anyway, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I appreciate you tuning in. And if you're tuning in, you want to say hi in the comments. It's always great to see who is out there and who is watching. So um, yeah, so I'm, I'm getting back into the rhythm of doing this weekly live stream thing again. And hopefully I'll be able to keep it up for a while. Um, and I've been, been working in that emergence journal, that little journal that I've been working in, um, it seems like a really long time now, I guess it was May that I started it, but uh, over the summer when I wasn't live streaming, I wasn't working in it, so um, I kind of last week picked up where I had left off um, when things got kind of busy over the summer, so um, yeah, so that's kind of where I am uh, today, just kind of going to work in this journal. I, I went through some of my collage materials and found some things I think I want to work with. Um, and then we'll just kind of see where things go. And that's a lot of times that's kind of how I work is, is just allowing things to go where they want to. Um, sometimes I, sometimes I um, look through, like, you know, I'll look through my fodder stash or I'll, I'll think like, oh, I'm going to start with watercolor or I'll flip through the journal and I'll find, you know, something that like a place to start. Um, and then it's kind of to see like where it goes. Cause I, I think it really is a, a process of discovery and kind of listening to that, that intuitive voice that we all have, that little voice that says, oh, let me try this, oh, let me do that. So um, anyway, that's kind of where I am today. So I'm gonna start with some collage and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there. And as always, if you've got questions or comments or concerns, pop them in into the comments there and I'll try to address them or if you'd like to see something, um, but anyway, so, uh, but yeah, thanks again for tuning in and let's go ahead and let me switch this over and we'll see what I get into. So I've got my little journal. Um, last time I was kind of working in the back here. Um, I ended up going back and working in here and putting some, uh, what did I do last week? Oh, I, I picked back up with some of the the red lines, that's what it was. I knew I did that somewhere. Um, and so, you know, it's I've got, a lot of the pages are really starting to feel resolved, but uh, the ones near the back are probably in the, the least finished, the least resolved uh, states. So that's kind of where I'm gonna be working. So uh, last time I, I glued in this image of myself and cut the windows through these two spaces and glued in um, the bingo numbers. And I hadn't used bingo numbers before, so I went back and glued some into the beginning because I really want this to sort of kind of, I want it to flow. I want it to, to really feel like it's like one single piece and that you're just sort of flipping through and, and everything is connected. Um, so I went through my fodder, kind of looking through things and realizing that I hadn't, here in the back at least, hadn't used a lot of, uh, uh, book pages or security envelopes. So I have those with me today. And I think that's kind of where I want to start. So, you know, it's like, I've got, got a lot of maps. I've used that quite a lot. Um, but I think back through here, I want to use, I'm, I think I'm going to start with this page. because This is the page I think that had, there were a spread that really is uh, one of the spreads that really doesn't have a lot going on yet. I've built up textures and uh, with, the uh, paint and with the water soluble pencil and even some graphite. But I think I want to start with some of the, the text. I don't want to use it all, uh, but I do want to use a, a good chunk of it. I'm thinking like I've done here in the, in the previous page, I think it's back here. Um, yeah, here where I've kind of done the blackout poetry idea of you know going through and picking out words. Uh, I really like that. And so the fact that this is kind of the only space there that is like that, I think I need another space. And I think this would be a good one. Um, so anyway, but I've got a couple pieces. I think I'll start with this one. And I'm just gonna cut 
right down the edge. That way the text goes from edge to edge. And I think the idea is that I want this to come down in the middle and then we've got this little space down here. So that's what this is for. to gauge how much I'm going to need. I think I should be good. So I just sort of fold the the edge of that over the edge of the paper. And then that allows me to kind of know exactly where to cut. I'm going to cut it a little bit longer and I can trim off any extra later. Grab my glue paper, scoop this over a little bit and my glue stick. So like I was saying, I really want, I want there to be continuity in this book. So um, some of the ideas and techniques and materials, I want to use them throughout and repeat them at least a few times. Some, some things I've repeated a lot. It's just to kind of really make that, the, the book go from page to page. That glued on. I think while I'm at it, let me use this. Let me see. Oh, yeah. So I th this will be nice. It's long, so I can wrap it around. We trim off the ends. So one of the things that I like to do as I'm working, um, sometimes I'll it's not something I do all the time, but it's something I do quite a, quite a bit is I will use a single material and sort of jump around and add. So it's kind of what I'm thinking about with this is to think about, okay, I've got the collage, just sort of flipping through and seeing where I might put some of that. So I got some more of this security envelope. I think I have it starting kind of right there in the middle of that circle, come up, and wrap around.
I like how these two stripes kind of echo each other. Might be interesting to do a frame around this. I don't know if I've done a frame. I think I may have. Well, maybe not. So the pages in this book are pretty thick. So just having a window is is okay. Um, and uh, seems like you know it's nice and thick. Uh, if you are working in a thinner book, sometimes having a frame around it really helps kind of um, kind of reinforce it. So I think that's what I'll do. So I'm gonna use my text here. Let's see if I got some more, I might need some more. Didn't quite get out a whole bunch. So what I'm doing is cutting some strips with the idea that I can glue, glue it down like that. This page. So, yeah. So, this allows me to get some more collage in, um, but then also it serves a, a function. Like I said, not so much in this book because the book is not, the pages aren't super thin. But if you are working in a book with, like I said, with pages that are a little bit thinner, then this works really well. Um, it helps reinforce the window. And so then, you know, if you, you're less likely to have it rip on you. Oops, I got stuck.
like I said, just has a little bit of a frame and it helps reinforce that. Anyway, there was something on these pages here. Um, when I glued this in, I covered up the squares. So it's, I was just kind of thinking like, okay, when I glued that in, I was like, oh, I can always come back and add the squares on top. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And if, I'm, if I remember correctly, I probably used the fuchsia color since that's one of my favorite colors to use. So just to kind of bring those squares back. And as I've said before, that really helps push that collage right into the page. And I mean, really just that little square there, all of a sudden that square really pops out now. And then that strip gets pushed down into the page. So if you're, if you're ever doing anything and you're like, oh, I feel like that piece of collage is, is just sort of floating on top. This is an easy way to to help with that. Sorry, just checking to make sure everything was still up and running. I see that Francis mentioned that it seemed to be stuck, but uh, on my end, it looks like it's everything's okay. And Maddie just posted saying, basically saying how uh, cohesive the pages look. And I think part of that is just I limit my color choices, and uh, you know, just really limit that that color palette. So here it's just blues and, and pinks and purples. Um, I think that helps a lot. So I still have this piece here, this matte piece that is not kind of going down in. So I think what I'll do, let me see what's on the back here. Um, so I'm gonna use that same pencil. I'm gonna go around that cicada. See how that works. I'm going to dry this. So I'll go ahead and mute it. Okay. Um, the reason I wanted to dry that was I was thinking about like, okay, this goes over here. So 
think I want to continue that. Again, trying to think about how to make, just make, make pages flow together. And it's just something I don't think we really think of too much. You know, it's not really a concern, like in a book, like, oh, how, how does one thing relate to another? But, you know, I'm, re I'm really approaching this very differently than I would my everyday journal, my big 11 by 14 inch journal. Oh, sounds like my wife's sound. All right. There, so that really helps um, push that collage down, but then also just helps connect the pages. So I had the color, you know, the, when I did this, it went from purple, then the purple wrapped around, and then there's blue. Um, but now that line, that shape wraps around. And what I really like about that is that when things really get filled up on it, it's something you don't really notice. It's like, it, it almost becomes invisible underneath uh, underneath it all. But uh, hopefully the feeling is that not only is the spread cohesive, but that the book itself really will feel like it's very cohesive from one page to the next. I'm not gonna worry about drawing that right now, uh, but I'm gonna turn to this and uh, got my, uh, got a couple pens here. So thinking about this, you know, the, the blackout poetry thing, it's one of my favorite kind of techniques because it's like, you've got these words here, which are pretty just random. You know, it's like, yeah, I know this is from a certain book by a certain author. It's actually uh, uh, from Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe. And that's the book that I've, I've used for all of this. Um, and so it, it's, it's great because it's like, you know, this is a fiction uh, story. Um, you can always look and, and uh, you know, use different books. If you don't want to actually use the book, you can always scan it and um, you can always scan it and, and print it and use like, you know, the scan pages. Uh, but if you have a book that's falling apart, it's always great to kind of be able to use that. So I think I'm just going to go through and kind of um, just pick out words. Sometimes I do try to link them in like actual sentences, but I think just linking the word sometimes is really interesting. So with blackout poetry, traditionally you kind of black out all the words that you don't want to use. But I, I tend to just create a little rectangle around the word. And then I can come back later with uh, color and other things.
So I picked out these words, attempt the hope, not so large working time was covering observation. I don't know what that means, um, <laughs> if it means anything really, uh, but it, I think those words, uh, it's just, it's just the juxtaposition. I like that word, juxtaposition. Um, all right, I'm looking for a certain blue. There it is. I'm going to sharpen this, so I apologize for the noise. Um, yeah, so I, it's just that juxtaposition of the words and um, how they they might seem kind of like nonsense. But as you sort of think about it, you know, it's like, is there, is there like meaning that starts to come from it? And then thinking about it in terms of this book, which is, you know, the theme of it is emergence. Um, I, th I think with, with art that a lot of times well, I, I've said this a lot of times is that, you know, the meaning is in the making and that you, you can set out with a very specific thing in mind, but how the materials go together and how words, if you're using words go together and how it relates to pictures that you can't really predict how that's going to all go together and what meaning is going to come out of it. I think it's a little bit easier if you're kind of developing something from like you're kind of thinking of something more in an as an illustration like thinking about like oh I'm going to draw or paint this picture of this thing that illustrates this very specific idea that I have. And so I think it's a little bit easier in that regard to kind of have it pre-planned, have it planned out. Um, but I think that way of working can really, it can really um, shut you off to possibilities. And I'm not saying that it's wrong or that you shouldn't do that. And a lot of artists do that. I mean, I think it kind of depends on like what you're after, you know? So in this process of mine, it's, it's very open. And then I'm looking for discoveries. I'm not, I'm not trying to imagine something and then just plop that out onto the page like fully formed. It's like, it's like, oh, I have this idea, let me try it. And I'll put that here. And then, oh, let me, oh, this word kind of pops out. Oh, let me, let me highlight that one. And so it is a process process of discovery and it's really interesting i've been i've been really thinking about studying and listening to um a, a particular podcast about storytelling and really thinking about how those ideas can come across in art but then also thinking about stories i've i've always sort of had these stories bouncing around in my head um, and I've never written them down though. You know, it's like, I just, I'll have these thoughts and sometimes the stories kind of, uh, kind of stay with me for a while and then I forget about them. Uh, but, uh, I actually sat down this morning and started writing one of the stories. And even though I have an idea of, okay, this is, this is the story. This is like the main character. And this is who she is and this is what's happening and this is what's propelling the, the story forward as I was kind of writing it you know I had this real loose kind of idea but I as I was writing it I was discovering things I was I was thinking about about different things and like you know what you know like what the character was doing and how they what they were saying and how they were saying it and and really discovering kind of um, the, the real nuance of, of the story. 
And so I think that's how, like, I think we always feel like we have this very sp specific notion in mind and we have it all worked out in our heads, but until we actually sit down and put it on paper or canvas or on the computer, if it's digital art or writing or whatever, I feel like that we have to be open to that discovery. Like we're, we're discovering something as we're working. I don't, I don't know if that makes any sense, but just it's been on my mind. I'm actually thinking about, I need to get back into doing my podcast now that I actually have some time. And I think that's going to be one of the things that I talk about is that notion of story. But um, I think that, you know, like, like I was saying with art, a lot of times I think it is, yes, I have this notion of what I want to make. But until I sit down and make it, I don't know exactly what it's going to be. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and dry this. So let me mute this. All right. Um, I was just kind of looking at this and I had this thought of maybe using stencils, uh, stencil words or letters or something, but I want to go back. I can't remember. Yeah, I did. Okay. I had have the numbers one, two, three here. Um, again, it's just kind of looking for that continuity. I have some letters in the background there. And yeah, just kind of looking for those those types of things because introducing it all the way back here might seem sort of odd. Like, oh, where did that come from? Uh, again, I think it kind of goes back to that storytelling notion. Let's get my stencil out here. Um, and. always kind of, uh, so what, one of the things I've been learning about story is just that idea of story structure and that there's, for basic, sto for stories, there's a basic three act structure and that really act one is where you're setting up the story. And the idea is that, you know, you're really, that's, how, that's where you're setting the universe of that story. You're setting the world in which the story takes place. And so, um if you inter you know that's the part that's the part to really introduce things and so um sorry trying to think and draw at the same time uh but if you don't really introduce the world well and then later in the second act or in the third act you introduce something totally new and totally different that like, wait a minute, you didn't set up the parameters for that to happen. And so you, you, lead, you leave the reader or the viewer or, you know, whatever kind of, or the listener, like you leave it or you leave them kind of thinking like, wait a minute, that, that story, that, that didn't make sense because they didn't set it up. It's kind of like a joke, like, uh, when you think about jokes, like when you, you tell a story and, you know, a joke like, oh, a duck walks into a bar. Like we just accept the fact that a duck walked into a bar because we're setting it up at the beginning. But if you're telling a joke and you forget to say that the duck walked into the bar, then the joke doesn't make any sense. And then if you say at, during the punchline, oh yeah, and there was this duck and this is what he said, it won't be funny because Wait a minute, why is there a duck? Where did the duck come from? 
so it's kind of the same thing with this is sort of like this is i'm trying to keep this continuous trying to keep this sort of as that visual narrative uh really um makes me think about like okay did i do this in the beginning did i use stenciled letters and ink in the beginning and here's you know here's some more of that so it's like yeah okay i, I have that precedent so having it now doesn't seem like it's come out of out of left field and also thinking about like stories are often circular they come back to the beginning so that notion of having a photograph even though it's a different photograph of myself at the end well it's because i had it at the beginning um but uh, yeah it's it's really it's been really interesting to to hear to listen to this to about to, to storytelling and how that how that um can be applied to my art and really thinking about this kind of book this i'm thinking about this as a visual narrative this idea of a visual story um that it is linked together somehow and that this visual story goes from page to page that you know there is a beginning a middle and an end and it's really it's interesting to kind of look at this book now it, with those with with new eyes kind of because i'd kind of known a little bit about storytelling and story structure but not as much as i do now and so really kind of thinking about like oh if i were to go back through this book really kind of thinking about that how you know how could i make it stronger how could i or thinking about like if i started a new book and had that in mind from the very beginning i don't know it's just kind of a lot of stuff rambling rum, rumbling around in my head but uh anyway i'm, I'm gonna kind of wrap it up there but um yeah well I'm, I'm liking where this is going and just that that idea of story and, and storytelling and, and doing it as a visual narrative uh just sort of was striking me today so um anyway i appreciate you tuning in and uh you know if you have any questions or comments or concerns just drop them in into the chat um, and, uh, yeah, I appreciate you for tuning in and, um, oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to just mention that I do have some new online workshops, uh, set up. So you can check those out over at my website. Um, and I've got some in-person things coming up as well. So, uh, I don't think I have those on my website yet, but they will be hopefully soon. So anyway, I uh, really, really appreciate you tuning in. And whether you're able to tune in live or chat, uh, uh, catch the recording later uh, or ch ca uh, catch it on YouTube, really appreciate it. So thank you so much. And as always, happy creating. <laughs>